Hi everyone, welcome to the video. So today I'm going to be talking to you about my flight simulator setup. As you can see, I've got flight simulator running on my primary monitor and I've got an external view of the aeroplane. I have iPad apps running below that are displaying various different instruments. To my left, my laptop is displaying little nav map. And then on the desk in front of me, I have the Thrustmaster 1600M throttle and joystick. This flight simulator setup, in comparison to others, is relatively low cost. Now I've been able to find some software that runs on iOS 9, which is quite old. And iOS 9 actually runs on the original iPad mini that was released in 2012. So what I've done with my rig is I've got three iPad minis that cost me 40 Canadian dollars each. And I've put them together, as you can see, and I've got various different instruments running on them. So on my left and my middle iPad, I have got the cockpit app. And on the right iPad, I've got the radio comms app, and I also occasionally switch that to the map app. And I'll show you those ones in a second. And this is how the map app looks like if I switch it over on my third iPad. Now I'm gonna show you what this looks like. So hopefully on that short flight you were able to see some of the instruments on the iPads moving around. The next part of this video is going to be focused on the setup instructions. So that's everything you need to do to be able to build a similar rig yourself. This is the software I've installed to get the solution working for myself. First of all I installed the FSU IPC7 V7.3.8 software and this can be found on fsuipc.com. Secondly, I installed the Windows Remote Flight Server version 1.0.0.47 and this can be found on remoteflight.net forward slash server. Once Flight Simulator 2020 has been loaded and you see the main screen like this, the FSU IPC 7 software should automatically load in the background assuming a default installation has been performed. So I will show you that now. This is what the FSU IPC 7 software looks like when it's loaded correctly. It should show a connected state here. Once that's been confirmed, the next thing to do is to run remote flight server. So you will need to set the server IP address and the port and then press start server. It will then wait to connect to the SIM and then it should connect after a few seconds as we can see here. Once that has been done, your iPad apps should be able to speak to the remote server here and you should be able to see the instrument data change as you navigate around in the aeroplanes. Just one additional thing to note, so the server IP address is going to be unique to your machine. So in my case, this is the IP address of my laptop on my internal network. Yours will likely be different. And the server port here, it can be customized. I have manually fixed mine to 5148 and that's because you will need to adjust some firewall rules on your Windows machine to allow devices on your local area network to talk to your device on this particular port. Additional information about the iPad apps can be found on remoteflight.net on the apps section of the website. Here you'll see a list of all of the apps that they have. The applications that I've installed and used in the demo 
are RF Map HD, RF Cockpit, Glass and RF Radio. If you're trying to find them in the App Store, you'll need to search for Remote Flight Glass, Remote Flight Cockpit HD, Remote Flight Radio HD and Remote Flight Map HD. To finish the setup, I'm going to show you how you'd configure the iPad app. So in this example, I have my iPad here, I have Flight Simulator running in the background, and we've got the software that I talked about just a second ago. So I'm going to go ahead and load up the RF Cockpit app. Here's a zoomed in view of the app. So the first thing we need to do is configure the iPad app to speak to the software that we configured. So we press the set button and there's a server IP and a server port that we need to configure. I've pre-configured this already with the parameters that I showed you earlier. I'm going to press test. It says congratulations, it's working. That means the iPad can communicate over my local area network with my flight simulator software. I will press OK. I'll just save this. The last thing I need to do to get this app working is to press this little power button here. As soon as I do that, it will talk to the flight simulator software and it will adjust these values that you see here. So at the moment, I have an airplane that sat on an airport in Calgary. The reason for that is Calgary has an elevation of 3,400 feet. So at the moment, this altimeter dial is showing zero. As soon as I press power, we'll see this dial will adjust immediately. Back to the simulator. This is how things look if I apply some throttle and I move the plane around a little bit. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching. I hope you found the video beneficial. Feel free to leave any questions or comments. If you've enjoyed the video, please like it. And it'd be great to hear from you if this video has been beneficial and if you've set up a similar rig. And happy flying!